Thank you, Speaker. I rise on behalf of the Greens to speak on the Crimes Legislation Amendment Assaults on Retail Workers Bill and state at the outset that no person should ever be subjected to violence, assault or mistreatment in their workplace. There is absolutely no place for that kind of aggression or behaviour to be subjected, for anyone to be subjected to that kind of behaviour. That said, the Greens do not support the approach to this legislation and we don't support this legislation because we believe very strongly that the way to address violence and workplace safety for all workers, including retail workers, is to address the fundamental and underlying issues that are facing and putting these people at risk rather than simply wave through a piece of legislation to look strong and tough on law and order wave that banner of law and order around the chamber and hope that it will go away. The introduction of this bill is an example of punitive lawmaking rather than an evidence-based meaningful change to address the occupational violence experienced by retail workers. This is a tick and flick exercise. We're simply making a change to the penalties within the Crimes Legislation Assaults on Retail Workers Bill is seen to be taking action, but it will actually have no material impact or benefit or change to retail workers on the shop floors in the shops now because what it will do is make everyone in this place feel like they've done a good job but the reality of what retail workers face day to day when they are working will not change as a result. It is for this reason that the Greens do not support these increased penalties introduced um, here by this Labor government, and it is the same reason why we didn't increase, in, did not support the increased penalties introduced by the Liberal National Government at the time, and we don't support these now. The introduction of this bill is yet another example of how we see an attempt to address societal problems through a crime and order and order approach. The bill seeks to model the escalated penalties laws that provided higher penalties for assaults against frontline health and emergency workers to extend that to retail workers. And again, as I repeat, the idea of violence being okay and any of these workers being subjected to that violence is not something that we condone. But the idea that we come in here and think by passing a law that slightly increases penalties is going to somehow deter people that often have complex mental health drug and alcohol or other serious trauma related um, personal issues that cause them to assault a retail worker or act in a way of frustration or violence or aggression towards them is not the answer. This law will not make retail workers any safer. The bill is part of a worrying trend of extending aggravated sentences and carving out specific industries of workers as more important or more essential than others, and continuing the previous government's tough on crime and law and order approach to work health and safety, which we know does not work. It is not about making any real changes to address the workplace conditions and safety of those working in retail. We know that increased harsher sentences will not decrease rates of assault or abuse or provide greater protections to retail workers. We know that many of the people who engage in this kind of aggression or violent behaviour or assaults are disproportionately marginalised people already in our communities that struggle with language barriers, struggle with complex mental health issues, struggle with disenfranchisement within society. And those people are not, shock horror, following the details of this debate, nor I'm guessing would have any idea of the penalties in the Crimes Legislation Act that would allow them to know that we have even increased or doubled or increased the penalties or changed them in any way. When they are engaging with this kind of abuse, with these kind of tirades, they are doing so because they themselves require assistance and help. They themselves require drug and alcohol support. They themselves require mental health support. They themselves require a system that does not traumatise them but instead supports them. But instead what we are doing here is purporting with this piece of legislation to provide protection to retail workers when the cause and the reason for this harm is linked to such bigger societal problems than we will solve in the Crimes Act.
There are very many things that this government can do to ensure that retail workers, and in fact all workers, are safe at work. It won't give retailers, this bill will not give retail workers more breaks. It won't give them more pay or more protections or reduce the casualisation in their workforce. It won't empower them to speak up to their bosses when they don't feel safe at work because they are in a casual work environment that doesn't, they, means they don't get rostered on to a shift if they complain to their boss. The insecure nature of retail work and the power imbalance between the bosses and the big corporations that profit from exploiting workers within those retail spaces, I note that some of those big corporations are supportive of this legislation here today, it's not a surprise that big business stands here in support of this legislation that allegedly looks like it's protecting the rights of workers. When we know that big business, every employer in fact, has a duty of care to their workers and we know that that duty care of care businesses and corporations have to retail workers could be massively increased. But again, what we see here is those corporates standing hand in hand with the minister as they announce these changes and these reforms looking like they're caring about the safety of their workers and yet at the same time we know that there is so much that could be done in those workplaces to make those workers safer. We also know that workplaces can be made safer by ensuring that there are safe break rooms, that abuse and harassment training is there, that there's adequate supervision and not junior staff left on the floor of retail shops without senior staff to assist them. We also know as well that occupational violence policies in the workplace must be strengthened. The Greens also firmly believe that it, of the right to organise and the right to strike of workers to ensure safety and that strong, robust, democratic unions that reflect the needs and the, the wishes of the workers that they represent are absolutely critical in that. Many retail workers are in, insecure and irregular work and we know that some of the most underpaid and precarious employed workers in our state are women, young people, recent migrants and disabled people. It is not a surprise that those people are the ones that suffer the most violence and aggression and abuse in the retail work because they are the people that experience the most violence and aggressive assaults in society in general. Whether these people are retail workers or not, so often it is these people who are providing the most critical services to our community in highly contested and sometimes challenging spaces. And it was nothing clearer than that, than what we saw during the pandemic. And this is a reaction to something that occurred during a period of time in the pandemic, particularly where we saw large scale attacks on Asian Australians, on Chinese Australian community workers and people in retail, hospitality and other spaces. But we need to recognise that part of that aggression and violence was because of the requirement to actually demand people sign in with QR codes, wear a mask, stand socially distanced and all of of a sudden we had this requirement on retail workers, on hospitality workers of others working in frontline services to play some kind of you know, uh, policing role in the way that this was managed and understandably in a highly stressful, massively unknown environment of a pandemic, people were responding and reacting in ways that was unacceptable. But we can't then say that the solution to that is to police our way out of it, to put more crimes in the Crimes Act to strengthen penalties and fail, fail to look at the underlying causes. As the member for Tweed pointed out, this also doesn't capture hospitality workers. And it's really important for us to think about this because at the point where we are carving out exceptions where we say assaults on retail workers get tougher penalties, pretty much what we're saying to the 16-year-old hospitality worker is that actually the assault on you is less important, it's less bad. What we're saying to the food delivery driver is actually that abuse that you copped, that assault on you, that's not as bad as the person that works in the bottle shop. And what we're saying to the librarian or to the parking inspector or to the person just happening to catch a bus or a train in our city is that the assault on you is not as bad as the assault that happened on someone else because we value the role that this person plays in society more than the value that you offer to society. What we create is a segmentation where we as a system are setting up a model that says to serve our needs, we put on a higher platform the need to protect certain types of people than other types of people. And that's not something the Greens can support. And it's certainly not something that I wanna see put into our laws. The idea that we create a hierarchy 
where we say that assaults on certain types of people who do certain types of productive capital work, capitalist type work to produce profits for certain retail outlets is more important than other people who face assault or this kind of aggression is not something that we can support. And so while the Greens hope that every retail worker is safe in their workplace, we do not support this change to the Crimes Legislation Amendment Assaults on Retail Workers Bill.